Hi folks and welcome to STWWW for 2019. Uh, a bit of a change in my usual practice for these videos. In previous years I've shown you a, a complete a guided tour of my complete entire collection. But of course 90% uh, of that is the same as previous year so it got to be boring and the videos were getting a bit long so this year I've decided to just uh, focus on the on the uh, ones that I've bought uh, during the last 12 months since the last SDWWW and if you want to see the, the rest of the collection you can always go to the archives in the forum and look at last year's video so, so first off was this uh, GISCA steamroller. Uh, don't ask me what GISCA stands for because I can't remember. It is on my website if you want to check up on it. It's an Italian firm and quite a distinctive design. The only problem is that the, the original burner is missing and I can't seem to find a suitable one that fits and works. Next up was this uh, Stuart 10V, perennial favourite. And this is my favourite purchase the last year, showing the Lipsa, Lipsia. Wonderful engine. And again, only one major problem is the uh, side glass is missing. And then next came another roller. This is a DM Butcher roller. At first glance it looks very much homemade but it's not. I don't know how many were made, probably not many. But it's certainly not a one-off. And they also did a uh, a traction engine version which is much rarer than the roller this needed quite a quite a, a lot of repair to get it back together and running but it does run now this is one of the many CK variants this is one with a vertical boiler and a horizontal cylinder. And like most of the CK engines that I've come across, they don't appear to have model numbers or names or anything like that. This came a close second for uh, being my favourite purchase of the last 12 months. Stinko Linda Marie. Lovely boat. It uses the Stinko Marine engine, which also comes, is sold separately. This is a Stuart Turner steam hammer. and could quite easily have been a candidate for my favourite purchase of the year but unfortunately it doesn't work 
I'm pretty sure it never has to have worked. Nothing fundamentally wrong with it, I don't think. It's just that it's so stiff that uh, I can't even, well, I have difficulty in moving the plunger in by hand, let alone by steam or, or even air. I don't have a high pressure air supply anyway. Next is this uh, gem marine engine. Uses the SEL multi unit. Now this wonderful piece of Swiss engineering was my next purchase. LS lock mini rocket. And yes, that is double O or HO gauge. And it is live steam. And then came this rather strange creation from Eric Haywood. It's actually a Stirling engine but uses three balls, three glass balls as a displacement cylinder uh, piston. The balls go backwards and forwards there as a test tube rocks. And the plunge of the piston of the test tube acts as a power piston and drives the front wheel via a ratchet. Next is another Stuart. I seem to have bought a few Stuart Turners this year. No complaints. This is steam feed pump. Traditional design. It works, but not all that reliably. And I've heard that that's quite a common complaint about these engines. This is, well, I think, is probably the largest of my purchases this year. Mamad LB1 bus. Next came a Mamad traction engine. Not the usual T1. This is a Centurion with the double acted, double acting slide valve engine. Another loco. This is Bar Knight. It had a model number, I don't know what it was. It's obviously uh, been well used. 
obviously intended to look like an 040, but it's in fact a, technically a 220. This is the JC Eunice engine, unknown model number. These engines are all rather photogenic with a nice uh, smoke effect on the base and on the chimney. This is uh, one of the slightly unusual but by no means rare dynamo versions of the SP2. Known as the SP2D of course. It has a an oversized flywheel with a band driving the dynamo built into the smoke box of the chimney with a lead bulb on the top of the chimney. Not exactly prototypical. And my next purchase was this Linemar atomic reactor. With a rather distinctive hemispherical boiler. It's not quite, not actually spherical. It's flat, flat bottomed. And then there's that rather garish monstrosity there, which is good fun. That's all it was intended to be. That tower contains some mechanism driven by off the crankshaft and a couple of light bulbs. One light bulb flashes on and off and the other swings up and down. And this is a Car East, at least I think that's how it's pronounced, of a type engine. Rather sturdily built, runs nicely, twin flywheel. Another rather obscure English make, Swan, it's the Swan M1. has rather a distinctive square chimney. This is probably my most expensive mistake of the year. It's a marine engine, apparently rather old, probably scratch built. into a rather distinctively styled frame, obviously intended to fit into a hole. And it has a pair of oscillating cylinders in a V formation. With the port faces built into the uh, tronium bearings in a similar manner to the uh, real 
real life early marine engines. Uh, here, sitting in front of the Hornby rocket is Mammoth's Harry the rocket. Which is, without doubt, Mammoth's biggest mistake. Ever. And they don't deny it. It was uh, an experiment to see how cheaply they could make a locomotive. And my latest purchase so far anyway is this uh, Opitec Stirling engine bought as a kit I just recently finished building it up Needs a bit of running in, but it runs better every time I run it, so uh, I assume it will run in quite nicely, eventually. It's uh, rather unusual in that the displacement piston is actually made of steel wool. Which goes backwards and forwards. inside the glass cylinder. Now the, uh, <laughs> the heat has uh, discovered, discolored the steel wool which makes it rather colourful. But the idea being of course that it uh, acts as a regenerator which means that it can legitimately be classified as a Stirling engine whereas most uh, toy or model hot air engines can't because they lack the regenerator between the hot and cold sides of the cylinder and I've just added another item onto the list this nice little Walmart Trojan 1926 I believe it's incomplete it's sitting on a plywood base at the moment burners are obviously missing and so is the safety valve it's a quarter BSF thread so a Mammoth one will will do for the moment till I can find the new one. But the Walmart engine has been on my hunt list for quite some time. So I've managed to fill that particular slot. <laughs> 